Hello all. So in this video, we are going to discuss about logic values available in Midlook. Okay. This we have discussed by simulation, but this time we will look at in detail. So logic values basically says what all values the signals uh, can take when you do a simulation in Midlook. Okay. So basically, uh, there are four logic values. They are 0, 1, x and z this we have seen before 0 and 1 we have used extensively 0 is basically indicating uh, either logic value low or false or 0 itself okay depending upon that you can choose 1 is representing logic high true or 1 okay x is indicating this we have seen before unknown basically unknown or it can be also uninitialized these are the cases for x z represents high impedance okay now let's see physically what these things mean okay so zero uh, as i mentioned it represents an low voltage or output value is false okay so uh, to explain it let, let me take a gate as an example so we'll take this NOT gate as our example case uh, let me show you what is actually inside NOT gate how NOT gate is composed of transistors okay so if we are going for CMOS based design a NOT gate will be composed of two transistors like this the one on the top we call it as a PMOS this is NMOS. More details we will see in the VLSI course. Anyway, so this is PMOS, this is NMOS, this we will connect to VCC, and this is where we are going to give the input, this input, and this is where we are going to take the output. Okay. Now, not gate, you know, if you give high, you will get low, and if you give low, you will get high. Okay, so let's see what is really happening. So if you give a high here, or one here, what happens is this PMOS will turn off. So you can see a bubble here for PMOS, which is basically indicating this will turn on if the voltage at this gate is low. Okay. So if you give one, this guy will turn off, this guy will turn on. So you'll see like there is a uh, short circuit or a very low impedance path from the output to the ground. So if you measure the voltage here, you'll get a low voltage. That is one way of looking at it. Another way is under this scenario, uh, if you have a current at the output, that current will be flowing in this direction. Okay. And this is what we call as current sinking. So this guy is actually sinking the current. That is what is representing this. Now, if you give low here, what happens? He will turn on, he will turn off. So you will see there is a short circuit from VCC to the output. So the output voltage will be high. That is one way of looking at it. If you look at the current, the current will be flowing something like this. So we'll say like it is sourcing the current. Okay. So current is being sourced. That is what we call as logic one. Now explain uh, Z, this circuit is not enough. So high impedance state comes when the output is neither sourcing current nor sinking current. Okay. Current is not flowing in this direction or in this direction. For that, what you need, you will have to keep both these output transistors off. Okay. How to do it? We are not worried now. Uh, assume we have some circuit here, some guy sitting here. What happens is you will have an input and you will have some control signal here again. So if you make this control signal high, he will keep both of them in off state if you make the control signal low he will behave the same way that we have seen before so when the control is high both of them are off there is no current flow there is a very high impedance at the output that is what is represented by this state the high impedance state x uh, practically uh, when you build a circuit there won't be any x there will be always some value zero or one okay x basically the simulator is telling you he doesn't know the value of the signal because you didn't tell the simulator what is the value. 
and that's where x is happening in verilog coding sometimes we use x also to indicate don't care condition that we will see later uh, there also we will use x saying like i don't care about this signal so that uh, he can more optimize it that's a different scenario but during simulation if you are seeing x that basically says the simulator here doesn't know the value of the signal or that signal is unknown. Now let's look at a sample code. So I have a very simple module here uh, to test these values. So I have A as input, O as output. One and zero, I'm not showing you. You already know if I write like assign O equal to one, tick V1, output will become high. That is represented by one or zero. You just write like this, right? Now if you don't give any value and if you directly try to simulate it, okay. you'll see both of them are in Google and here are the values it is being shown like high Z, high impedance. So he's basically saying the output is not driven by any logic. That's what we've seen before. Okay. There is no current going out or coming in from the output. So that is what is representing high impedance. Input is also high impedance because there is nobody driving the input. So if you drive any value here through force, that value will come to the input. Otherwise, nobody is driving the input, so it will remain blue in color. Now this X, let me try to show it. So suppose I have an internal register K and I am saying like assign O equal to K. Okay. Is this correct? It is correct. Assign statement, left hand side should be wire type or should be wire type. What is on the right hand side doesn't matter. It can be a register also. So in this case, if you run it, you will see the value of output as well as k. Both are right. X, so okay, unknown. This is like state X. Again, unknown. This is coming because the simulator, he doesn't know what is in the register whether it is high or low. Now, if you practically build this circuit, there should be some value there. It could be one or zero, okay. Now, if you explicitly say this equal to zero, you'll see both output as well as K, they got the value, okay. So you can either do it like this or you can use an initial block that we have seen in the test bench video. There also you can say like k equal to zero. Same effect will come. Or the ideal way is to have a, some kind of reset signal and you, you assign value to k using that reset signal. Since it's a register type, ideally uh, this should be some kind of sequential circuit. So we need some kind of clock and that's what we have been doing. Okay, that's the best way. But you can do it through the initial block also. Now whether initial block is synthesizable or non-synthesizable depends. If we are aiming for FPGA based design uh, that we are doing, initial block is synthesizable. The tool can somehow give that initial value to the signal. But if you go for ASIC design, application specific IC, initial blocks are usually non-synthesizable. So that is not encouraged there. Suppose, okay, let me add a clock and over here. Okay, so I have input clock. I have two input, okay, input A, input B. My condition is something like, okay, like a multiplexer. If A is one, I want my output to be zero. And if B is one, I want the output to be one. This is the specification given to you, okay? It's only told if A is one, output is zero. If B is one, output is one. Nobody told you uh, what should be the value of A when B is one for this to happen. Suppose this is the case. So what you did, you went ahead and write something like this. Uh, always that for such clock, you wrote like, okay, let's assume no need of reset and all. If A, you set like O is 1. And in another always block, okay, similar always block, you wrote like if B, O is 0. Okay, so somebody asked you to write it, you wrote it. Okay, 
logic seems correct now let's try to simulate it okay so this should be rich type okay no error, error. so restart we need to add all sequence here it's all Okay, so I'm saying like initially both A and B are zero. So what value will come to O? Okay, you'll see like O is right. Because you haven't written what should be the value of O when A is zero, or you haven't written what should be the value of O when B is zero. Okay, that automatically means O should retain its previous value, as we have discussed. Now, what is the previous value of O at the beginning? We don't know because O is not initialized. We didn't have a reset to initialize O or we didn't write any initial block to initialize it. Well, that's fine. That's why we have the red signal here. O is unknown. Now let's try to make A as 1. Okay. I made A as 1, B I am keeping it as low. So A became high here after the clock edge. So what happened? O became high here. Okay, so this condition actually happened. Now let me do something more. Let me make B also one. So what do you expect to happen? Again, remember this is not software. Don't think like this happens first, then hit this happens. They are happening at the same time. That's what we are modeling. The model sim simulator, he treats it like a software. So he first tried this one, then this always blocks. Since this is coming second, uh, he made the output low. But you will see like the signals, it is against my code. In the code I have written, if A is 1, O should be 1. I didn't say anything about B here. right? So on this clock edge, A is still 1, still he made the output low. Now in simulation, uh, you will see like this. But when you go for implementation, we call the synthesis, almost all synthesis tools, they will give you an error here. Okay, so he will say like, this is not possible to implement. And I guess some simulator, they will also make the output as a red X unknown instead of making it low. I, I thought like Monosim also makes it red. Anyway, he made it low, but this is an illegal coding. And this is what we call as multiple drive, okay, multiple drive. So basically what is multiple drive? Same signal is driven from more than one always block. That is what is causing a multiple try. So for synthesizability, simulation, okay, you can simulate. This is not a syntax error, so you can simulate. But if you really want to synthesize, okay, any signal on the left hand side inside an always block should not appear in more than one always block. That is the rule. Okay, if you have it in more than one always block, that is a multiple try and we cannot synthesize we cannot actually build that circuit so here you can see this o is there inside on the left hand side remember only on the left hand side inside two always blocks so there is a multiple drive on the o why this is happening because what the synthesis tool does is you know he does all the capac optimization everything so his basic unit for optimization is an always block so since he saw o here uh, based on this block, he will make a circuit for O. So what is this circuit? If A, O1, so what does it represent? It is a kind of multiplexer. So we have a flip-flop. His output is O, and it is written if A is 1, output is 1. So we will have a max. The control signal to that will be A. So if A is 1, so that input will be connected to VCC 
So if A is 1, this will go as input, which will go as output. If A is 0, we should keep the previous. So there will be a loop back like this. This is the design for uh, that always block. Now the second always block says if B is 1, output is 1. So we will have another circuit like this. Okay. And here we have B sitting and this is also O. So we have one signal called O which has two circuits. So physically it should be something like this. So you can see two guys are driving the same wire at the same time, same signal at the same time. This is illegal. So practically what happens if this output is 1, this output is 0, what will come to the output? 0 will dominate 1, so the output voltage will be low. It is like you have one wire and to that one wire you connect a battery here and you also ground it at the end and if you measure this voltage. So this ground will dominate this battery output voltage and you will measure zero voltage here. Same thing is happening here and here you can see there is a short circuit here uh, which can have serious consequences. Same thing is uh, true here also. So this circuit is actually non-synthesizable because of multiple run. Okay. So always remember if you are uh, writing any very low code which you really want to implement on real hardware, you should never have multiple run. So this module should be modeled as if A O is 1 and else if B O is 0. And we can remove this always block. So now we don't have multiple drive. There is only a single always block uh, driving this output O. But we automatically brought a priority encoder here. Since I wrote A first, A has higher priority over B now. So if A automatically means uh, we don't care about B. Else if B here automatically means if A is 0 and B is 1. Okay. So this way we can avoid this uh, multiple drive here I made a mistake if B output is low so this should be ground okay. so we don't have this uh, multiple drive now now we have a priority encoder sitting we don't have this guy here so we just have an encoder circuit which takes two inputs A and B VCC and ground and appropriately chooses these inputs based on these uh, control signals. Okay, so that's it in this tutorial. See you in the next video.